Welcome, my dear students and others, to my Chapter 9's continuing coverage of molecular geometry and bonding theories. For this video, I wanted to start by sharing a link to a different video that I posted on my YouTube channel many years ago. It's not actually relevant to chemistry or, frankly, to anything, but I thought that I would post it. It's in the description below. You're welcome to watch it if you want to get, hopefully, a good laugh. All right, so in this series of videos that will start from here and end a few videos from now, they'll all be linked to each other one after the other. Hopefully, you will learn the following things. That is, you'll gain the following skills being able to indicate how atomic orbitals overlap when atoms form bonds, identify the number of sigma and pi bonds in a molecule, determine an atom's hybridization and its bond angles, explain what hybrid orbitals are, draw molecular orbitals and MO energy diagrams for simple diatomic molecules, and be able to calculate bond orders. So that's where we're going. Let's begin. So according to a model called valence bond theory, covalent bonds form when orbitals overlap. This is shown in the following figures, which depict the formations of H2, HCl, and Cl2. For example, then, if we take two individual hydrogen atoms, which each have their 1s orbitals that each contain one valence electron, those two H atoms will combine when they form an H2 molecule. How do they form that single bond between the two of them? By having their orbitals overlap. Similarly, when I have an H2 atom overlap its 1s orbital with a p orbital in chlorine to form HCl, it will look like this. And separately, when two chlorine atoms form a single bond, they do so by overlapping their outermost 3p orbitals. So again, the bonds formed are all caused by orbitals overlapping with each other. Given that information, I would like you then to draw a picture showing how 2p orbitals on two different atoms can overlap to make a sigma bond. All right, so how would I do this? Well, I would just begin by drawing out two generic p orbitals. You could imagine these as each being pz orbitals. That is p orbitals that traverse the z-axis. And I'm not drawing the px's and the py's. When they overlap to form a sigma bond, they do so in a way that kind of looks like this. So if you draw something that looks like this, that's pretty much the answer to this question. So as it turns out, each single bond in a molecule is called a sigma bond using this Greek letter sigma. In contrast, all double bonds contain one sigma and one pi bond, and this is the Greek letter pi. Triple bonds, however, contain one sigma and two pi bonds. We can see that in some examples. In the molecule methane shown right here, it will contain an ideal bond angle of 109.5 in its three-dimensional tetrahedron. Now, I know that the bond angle shown right here on the screen is not 109.5. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the actual molecule in real 3D life will have 109.5 bond angle between these hydrogens. And what types of bonds will be in it? Well, yeah, all the bonds between the carbon and the surrounding hydrogens are all single bonds, which means that there are four individual sigma bonds because single bonds contain all sigmas. Make sense? Compare that then with this molecule. Well, this molecule has three atoms bonded to and surrounding a central carbon. The ideal bond angle around that will be 120 degrees with a trigonal planar geometry. You'll see that in this carbon hydrogen single bond, as well as this one over here, each of those is an individual sigma bond. Whereas this carbon oxygen double, what is that? Well, yes, I just pointed out up top, every double bond contains one sigma and one pi. Thus, overall, we end up having three total sigmas and one pi. That is, the carbon-oxygen bond contains one sigma and one pi, and each carbon-hydrogen single is one sigma bond. Let's compare that then with this glorious molecule, which you can imagine will have a completely linear molecular geometry, 180-degree bond angle. And what types of bonds? Well, yeah, each of the single bonds is a sigma, and then the triple bond, as I state up here, contains one sigma and two pi's. So we see then that the carbon-carbon triple contains one sigma and two pi's, and each carbon-hydrogen single is a sigma. In total, then, we have three sigmas and two pi's. Make sense? Good. Now, as additional important information, because sometimes you'll see this on exams, sigma bonds end up being a little bit stronger than pi bonds, for reasons that I'll explain in a little bit. Let's consider all of this as we look at a problem. I want you to consider the Lewis structure of glycine shown right here. Then tell me, what are the approximate bond angles around its two carbon atoms? And separately, how many total sigma bonds are there across the entire molecule? And how many total pi bonds are there? Now, just so you know, I'm not going to do this question for you, but I have a link in the description below or possibly floating over my head as an in-video link to a separate video in which I will show you how to do it. Let's jump then to another question, which I will make you do on your own. I want you to draw the Lewis structures for ethane, ethylene, and acetylene, whose formulas are shown right here, and then indicate how many sigma and pi bonds there are within each molecule. We now leave that subject and move on to this one, determining an atom's orbital hybridization. All right, so to determine an atom's 
orbital hybridization, which is something we have to do sometimes, you just have to count the number of things around the atom and then memorize the stuff I'm going to show you in a moment. Now, when I say things, by the way, I'm referring to either other atoms or lone pairs. So a lone pair counts as one thing, another bonded atom counts as one thing. Once I count those number of things around the central atom, I can determine that central atom's hybridization by memorizing the stuff shown right here. If my number of things is two, then my hybridization is sp. If it's three, then the hybridization is sp2. And if it's four, then its hybridization is sp3. Let's consider then some examples. What is the hybridization of each of the indicated atoms? All right, to apply what we just learned, we just look at the central atom and count how many things are around it. You can see that this central carbon atom is surrounded by four things, that is four hydrogen atoms. So I hold up four fingers and I note that the first finger will belong to S and the remaining fingers will belong to P's. So I've got S, P3. Over here for this carbon atom, I count how many things there are around it and I don't care the kinds of bonds around it, I just count how many things are directly bonded to it. You can see that it has a hydrogen to its left, another hydrogen to its right, and an oxygen up top. That's three things. One of those fingers will be an S and the other two will be P's. So this has a hybridization of SP2. Similarly for the oxygen up top, it has three things around it, a carbon beneath it, a lone pair, and another lone pair. That is also three things, and yes, lone pairs count as a thing. So its hybridization is also sp2. Which takes us down here, how many things are around that carbon? Again, the kinds of bonds around it are irrelevant. I just count how many things it's bonded to. This carbon is bonded to a hydrogen to its left and a carbon to its right. That's two things. So one of these fingers, and I have to be careful which one I put down, is an s, and the other is a p. Hence the hybridization here is sp. Got it? Good. Well, if you're feeling so smart then, I want you to tell me what the indicated bond angles are for each of the carbon atoms here. All right, as you might have noted from things that we learned in our past lecture, when you have a central atom surrounded by four groups, the ideal bond angle right here, tetrahedral geometry, is going to be 109.5. And down here, I've got an atom surrounded by two things, hydrogen to its left, carbon to its right. What's the furthest those two things can get apart from each other? Yeah, absolute straight line, 180 degrees, linear shape. And over here, I've got a central carbon surrounded by three things, a carbon to its left, carbon to its right, and an oxygen up top. Furthest you could get three things apart from a central point? Yeah, it's going to be 120 degrees in a nice trigonal plane geometry or shape. We end then with one last question, which I'm not going to answer here, but I will post a link to in the description below to a separate video with its answer explanation. I want you to determine the hybridization of each atom in this molecule right here. Please give that a try, and then if you like, you can click that separate video where I will explain it to you. Until next time, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.